a lesson three, which is our Lunar New Year edition. And I was just looking at my calendar and I realized that this weekend on Sunday, it is already Chinese New Year. And I didn't even realize until now, pretty much. And let's welcome back. We have Sue joining us again. Again, Sue is the content creator of Cantonese Corner, which you can find YouTube. She also has a website called Cantolingo, and she runs some traditional Chinese uh, character classes. And you can check her out by going on her website and also visit her on YouTube. Hello, welcome back, Sue Lei Hou Ma. Hello, Ho Ho. Um, thank you for having me again for our third Chinese New Year edition. And I just want to say, if you do go to my website, I'm getting it ready to kind of launch the next set of courses. So there's not much information up there now, but there will be soon. And but I'm really excited to be here today to continue our talk about everything to do with Chinese New Year. And today we're going to be continuing talking about what happens on days one, two, and three, which would be Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, because Sunday is the first day of the new year, right? Yep. And they will be talking about a lot of things, among which are the Lysi or the red packets, uh, some lucky sayings we're going to introduce, and also a bit on lucky food. So we'll be throwing that around. Um, but let's nice. get started. <laughs> let's get started with them. Um, again, if you are learning Cantonese, it is a tonal language, as you probably know. And so there are six tones. Uh, three are flat. One, three, and six are your flat tones. Don't make them go up. Don't make them go down. Just flat. Tone two and five rise up. And tone four is actually your lowest tone, and that is a low falling. I do use the Yale system, but for this, uh, for our Canto talk, I'm using kind of Yale. If it looks weird, if you're used to the Yutpeng, well, if you don't know, there's two phonetic systems. One is Yale, one is Yutpeng. And I use Yale spelling with the Yutpeng numbers. So that's just a little, a little heads up when we get to the phonetics of our class. Yep. So the system that's used is a bit of a hybrid um, because the Yale, normally it will be easier for those who are English speaking. And then I believe you paying it's easier for those who are Mandarin speaking. Is that correct, Sue? Yeah, there's a little bit to that because like, for example, the Y, there's something with the J, a J in Yutpeng sounds like a Y and a J in Yale sounds like a J. So um, people have said that Yale is a little bit easier because the letters they use are more like what you would expect in English. But if you do know the Mandarin pinyin system, then yeah, some of those might be more familiar to you. Yeah. So we are going to do a, just a little bit of review because we have a lot to cover today, tonight. So we're going to talk about last week on Wednesday, we talked about preparing for Chinese New Year and how uh, the first one there is Lin Ya Ban. And we talked about how the that is the 28th day of the 12th month. So um, that would have been, let's see, the first day is the 22nd, New Year's Eve, when, going back to like the 19th. So tomorrow, actually, yeah. yeah, so tomorrow is the 28th day. And you'll notice if you know your numbers that um, uh, 28 would be yi sabat, right? Yi sabat in the full formal way to say 28. But you can condense it, and that's why you get your lin ya, lin ya ba, right? The ya stands for yi sa. Uh, likewise, the 29th day, which would be Friday, is lin ya gao, and then lin sa man. Uh, lin sa man zao hai, New Year's Eve, and you'll notice that the, it's kind of cool, right? You see that middle character there with the three lines down in the cross? That character there means your sam sa, right? That's your sa, sa man, man meaning evening. So that's New Year's Eve. Do you guys remember any of the preparations, what you should be preparing for? If you want to unmute yourself and share with us, what are just one of the preparations that you should be doing before the first of the year? Anybody want to unmute themselves and share? I have to clean my house, but I haven't. <laughs> I, heard, I heard someone else. Did anybody else? I said clean your house also. <laughs> yep. That, that is the big one, right? Clean your house, um, cut your hair. Fan. Tunin Tunin fan. Fan. Mm -hmm. Yep, tunin fan. Do you want to explain what that is a little bit? It's when the family gets together the night before with, with a big uh, dinner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the most important dinner, right? When they tune in, they kind of end the year and they look forward to the new year. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
that's what we did last week. And then uh, today, tonight, we're going to be talking about what happens on the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. And you can see on this calendar here, this is a, a Western or I don't, Gregorian, I'm not sure what you call it, calendar, but it is also, you'll see a lot of Chinese characters there. And I know it's not very clear, but these calendars are real popular in Hong Kong and probably elsewhere where they talk about what's auspicious on that day and what's not auspicious on that day. And they have the lunar, the lunar numbers there as well. Uh, so the 22nd anyway, is called the first day of the new year. And so you'll see it's called Lin Cha Yat. Gum the Cha is like the beginning, the start, and yet of course is one. Uh, so Lin uh, Cha Yat. Cha Yat is New Year's Day. Uh, Cha Yi is going to be uh, the second day. And Cha Sam is going to be the third day. And you can say Lin Cha Lin Cha Yat, Lin Cha Cha Yi, Lin Cha Sam, but you don't have to say the Lin. You can just say Cha Yat, Cha Yi, Cha Sam. And so we'll be talking all about what we're doing on those days of the year. So Lin Cha Yat is going to be our Lunar New Year's Day. And on that day, it's real popular uh, to visit Wang Tai Sin Temple and burn incense, pray for good luck in the new year. It's also very popular to eat a vegetarian meal. Uh, that's for good health in the new year, eating a eating just vegetarian uh, meal. And of course, there's you talked about cleaning your house, no hair washing, but also no sweeping the floor. You don't want to sweep away the bad luck and you don't want to wash your hair uh, to wash away all the good luck. Anything else, Janet, for this one? I think that's about it. And um, eating vegetarian meal also on the first day and a lot of people they also eat vegetarian meal on the 15 days on the calendar too so it's chow yat and chow sapn so they believe that's the day that you shouldn't be um killing anything um therefore people eat vegetarian meal uh on the first day and also the 15 days but yes it's very popular to eat vegetarian on the first day of chinese new year yeah. And there's also uh, lots of other things to do. Like our next slide, I think goes into the most important visiting. So I remember when I first went to Hong Kong, it was 1988. And this was still a time when everything shut down. And all you saw on the streets, because you know how busy Hong Kong is, but all you saw on the street were people dressed in new clothes and red shoes if they're kids, or maybe even not kids, but a lot of red and carrying packages and going to visit right? Visit to exchange New Year greetings. And so we're going to be talking about that, but there is an order to do it. So on Aline Chalyat, you're going to be visiting your husband's family or senior members of the family to pay your respects first to them. And then on the second day, Chalyi is the day when you visit your wife's side of the family. And that's um, Lin Chalyi. And then Lin Chalsam, don't visit anyone. It's considered to be a day when arguments might happen. Uh, don't play any mahjong with family or friends. You might get into to, to arguments. And we'll talk a little bit more about what you do do on that day. But first, we're going to be talking a bit more about these visits. So the visits, of course, um, Lin Choyat is also the day when you're going to be giving Lysi envelopes. And so you'll hear the Tao. Tao is... is it doesn't literally mean give, but in this sense, it's give the Lysi packets. And those are red envelopes. And I think you guys know, shoot, I have I have some downstairs. I forgot to bring them up. <laughs> um, you've seen the red packets, right? Where where people will exchange those. And so we're going to talk more about that. Yep. So I have one that is right here. I hope you can see it. I think Tao, besides, uh, it probably has like both meanings, I would, I would think, uh, besides it as being gift and maybe also... Uh, can also mean to receive as well. Dao lai si, meaning you're getting lai si. Mm. Yeah, here we go. Yep. And so, but the lai si feng, feng is, um, you can see, now I've got it, actually, I've got in brackets, uh, lai si, or some people say lei. Uh, I did a video on this on my channel and we had this big discussion because some people said, no, it's lei, lei si. So if you've heard it as lei si feng or lai si feng, both are okay. It seems to be kind of what people have heard or grown up with. I'm not sure if it's kind of a regional thing, but um, in Hong Kong, like I've always heard like Lai Si Fong. Fong means envelope. So any kind of envelope is a Fong. Okay, so the first tone, the high tone, Fong. Now there's there's an order and a system to how you give your Lai Si Fong. 
And one of the criteria is two or one. So usually a couple is going to always give two, two red phone, two of the lacy phone. And uh, one would be, for example, if you're giving one to your, if, well, if you're, if you're giving one to your uh, caretaker, if you're giving one to Janet, you can. Uh, I can talk a little bit more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think usually the rule is that you will be married uh, and then you you are um, almost uh, guaranteed that you will have to give Lysi. But let's say if you are single and are married, then you can choose to give a Lysi to, let's say, people who work at your apartment building um, or, you know, people who deliver your newspaper. Um, so that's optional. Uh but then let's say if someone is divorced or someone that their spouse had passed away, that back to, you know, being one person, then they can also give out uh, a single IC as well. And then mm -hmm. as you can see in this picture as well, nowadays the IC phone in Hong Kong is, it's very colorful and with many, many designs. Some of the IC phone they said is even collectibles because the art is so pretty. Yeah, they really be, have become quite ornate. And a lot of the IC phone has the, um, like the, the surname on it. So we've got packs of them that just say Tsang, for example, the, the Chan surname or whatever your surname is, you might see that. But you'll notice here you've got UBS and Credit Suisse. The banks traditionally and different shops uh, traditionally have, have issued them as well. So you might get, you always get a variety, don't you? I mean, of, of them. Uh, but the beautiful, the, there have been such pretty ones lately. And of course, this was like Year of the Tiger last year, as you can yeah. see the tiger. This year, you're going to see a lot of Lysi Fong with rabbits all over them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and then someone had mentioned that we will use uh, new uh, uh, money as well, new bills, which I think we're going to be talking next. And then I think in here, there's a phrase that people would usually say, Sue, would you like to tell people what it is? Yeah, it's kind of a cheeky, a cheeky little phrase. Like kids might say like, the gong hei fa choi. Oh, I forgot to put the um, the uh, the tone markers there. But it's gong gong hei fa choi, gong hei fa choi, lai si dao lai, and it's kind of a, a cute way to say like wishing you a, a happy Chinese New Year. And now let's bring on the red packets, kind of thing. So it's a little cheeky, kind of, but it's it's quite common in Hong Kong at least to just kind of um, say it in with some with some kind of fun behind it right it's not serious right because you wouldn't then, be demanding it right yes and then in here then you will see all the um new uh i guess bills so it is also a tradition that in the lycee we will only put new money inside so then that's why in banks even banks in chinatown you will see lines of people because they're lining up to get the new bills so in hong kong it's pretty much the same that people will get new money for the lycee and you don't give your old money to the uh, Lysi Fong. Yeah, absolutely. It's it, <laughs> um, That's considered really, you know, if you're desperate, I mean, I remember desperate times when you're like, oh, just you're trying to find a bill that looks really, really new, you know, because you would never, ever put um, an old bill inside of a Lysi Fong. And yes, yeah, so you can see the Hong Kong money is very colorful and it's bigger than US money. So if you've ever been to Hong Kong with an American size wallet, I mean, not people don't even, it's kind of interesting because in Hong Kong, cash is still used a lot. Whereas in the US, I can't, I honestly can't remember the last time I've used, I use, I've used cash. Uh, so it's, it's, it's still used a lot and their money is so pretty with all the different colors. Um, but as you said, uh, new money and also, um, well, as, as Janet and I were speaking before the show, you really have 20, 50, 100, 500, 1,000. So you don't have like, uneven numbers, right? It's, it's always going to be an even an even number that you put in. But in the US, for example, you wouldn't put in like $25. It would usually be an even number, right? Because we don't even we don't have that problem. There's no problem in Hong Kong. But yeah. Yeah, you can give two twos, uh, two, two twenties. So yes up. And then you give two of them or you can give uh two mm sap man. Or you can give to yep ba man, uh, man it means the dollar, right? Yeah, dollar, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But man actually also means a mosquito. Yeah, <laughs> the character <laughs> itself. Um, so yeah, and now of course in here then we have ba man, um, but you have to give two, and then there's the largest bill that we have is yet chin man, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if we're talking about, let's say, this is, I think, the most popular one um, because of the color red as well. So mm-hmm. it's $100 um, Hong Kong money. It's about 12 or 13 bucks US. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's always, if you go on any kind of... Um, I've been following lately, like some of the Facebook groups in Hong Kong and everybody every year asks like, what's the going rate? What should I be giving? What should I give to my caretaker in my building? What should I be giving to um, my helper, people that help me? Um, Typically in Hong Kong, you will get one from your boss. So whether or not she's married, she will give you one envelope because she's, it's not really kind of a family thing, right? So she'll be giving you one regardless of whether she's married or not. But I guess that may not be a thing in in the US. Um, Yeah, moving on to snacks, you'll see when you visit, uh, you always are going to have a a chun hap. Well, not always, but traditionally a a chun hap is there. And it literally means a complete box. And you'll notice that it it usually, you'll see one, two, three, four, five, six, either six items or eight items uh, in a box. And whenever you go in and you say your new year greetings, and then they'll bring out, you know, the the tune hop and you'll you'll take something from that which is always going to be filled with auspicious good things yep and then in here we're going to actually show you uh with the tune hop mm. and how to prepare for that and then sue and i we will be kind of jumping in to give you translation but we are gonna shop in hong kong for all the tune hop ingredients <laughs> Tai so in here, you will see these are uh, candy lotus seeds. So um, they say that usually it will be eight different kind of candy. So of these, um, I think they're, you know, like a mix of fruits and nuts. Um, so this one in here, they say the lin zi, which is the lotus seed, which means um, a lot of kids. So usually when people get married and the seniors or the elders at home, they will definitely give these to the couple to wish them or to hope them that, that they will have a lot of children. So this is the candy lotus seed. Okay, uh, so this is actually, I wonder if you might be able to guess, but this is actually uh, coconut meat. So this is uh, candy coconut meat. And then coconut in Cantonese, it also means um, it could be, because it's called ye zi. The ye actually sounds like ye ye, which you might have remembered from our last lesson, which is grandpa. So they are hoping that grandpa is going to have grandsons. And then it also means they would like to see three generations of um, sons and grandpa and grandchild all together. So this is the uh, candy coconut meat. Ah, so this is a new one that it's round shaped. Uh, this is Wendy's favorite. It's the candied water chestnut. So um, this one, water chestnut, the word itself, it has ma in it. And ma is uh, the animal horse. So this one, uh, it's also gambling as a popular thing during Chinese New Year as well. And there's always going to be a special New Year horse racing. Uh, happening in Chinese New Year. So then people eat this and then they're hoping that, oh, you know, in the horse race, they're going to win money. Mm. 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 Mm.
望咧，屋企人咧、呃、都事事順利啦，可以誒、呃、飛黃騰達嘅意思係。哇！今日會唔會填報糖尿病啊？真係。但係其實咧，呢、這個馬體咧。本身馬體嗰個清甜再搭，再埋落去咧係勁甜嘅，但係佢個口感咧係我覺得咁多個咧最好入口嘅。我佢係真係堅入口即溶嘅，但係真係好甜。係啊，所以誒，所以好多時咧大家。誒、呃、嗰、那個馬體咧，佢都會選擇買少啲咯。之後咧就有蓮藕啦，蓮藕，蓮藕，咁就係蓮蓮。So this is a candy. What is this one? Lotus roots. Ah,、uh, so it's called Lian Ao. Um, so it all, almost kind of sounds like Lian Lian Dou Yao, which means you're gonna have everything that you wish for every year. Um, and the and the previous sort of conversation that they were talking about is also these candies are very very sweet. So then people don't necessarily buy a whole lot, but then they will get a small variety, a small amount of. A little bit of everything. Um, there's total of eight of them, but they will all get a little bit of that. 都有嘅意思，其实系取其谐音咯。咁跟住咧就系糖冬瓜啦。糖冬瓜，冬瓜咧有个诶特色咧，个冬瓜咧其实就系由头到尾我哋都食得嘅，佢净系中间嗰个心唔食得嘅啫嘛。系啊系啊，佢由头到尾都食得。咁所以佢个意思咧就系取其意思就系诶。So this is a candied winter melon, Dong Gua. So Dong Gua, if you have seen some of them in Chinatown, they are very big, kind of green on the outside and then white inside. And then the whole thing you can eat from the top to the bottom. So they're saying that、uh, this candied winter melon is wishes you good luck from the very beginning to the very end. 都係豐盛嘅，咁啊即係一年咧就好到尾啦。係啦，由頭好到落尾，咁、嗯、所以就要攞糖冬瓜啦。唔靚咧就成條白雪雪嘅，完全冇流青嘅。我想講係啊，我見到依啲有有青色啦，但係咧我之前食嗰啲係全部白色嘅。點解佢會全部白色咧？就係、是、第一個師傅畫冬瓜嘅時候咧好重，生成個冬瓜皮。咁、嗯、如果啲工誒嗰啲師傅係老手咧，佢淨係幫你刮走皮，但係留青，係啊，咁嗰個就係考師傅技巧啦。咁糖金桔咧，糖金桔。So this is Tong Gum Gut, which is the kumquat, candy kumquat.、Um, they kind of, you know, the real one. It kind of looks like this. I don't know whether you can actually see it right now. Oh, this is not kumquat. It's like Mandarin. Kumquat is smaller, I guess. And then、uh, gum guat gum itself, it means gold, and then gut is fortune. So then, you know, after you eat it, then you will have、um, a lot of money and a lot of good fortune that will come your way. So this is Tong Gum Gut. 金桔，金桔，有金又有桔，即系啲客人要包嘅时候咧，我哋多数都会同佢讲啦，一系要三对啦，一系要六对啦。哦，即系有分，即系双数。双数咯，系啊，就唔会单数咁卖。系啊，唔会单数噶啦。诶，呢啲都系意头嘢，就一定系成双成对咁啦。So yeah, so here they even say that when people buy this、uh, candy gum guat,、um, it will come in pairs. They will either ask people whether you want three pairs or do you want six pairs. They are often in, always in pairs. It will never be in an odd number. 买，咁金神咧都系攞个金字嘅意思啦。佢咧个意思就系系啊金币啊。你谂下，佢有大有细嘅金币。So these are candy、uh, carrots.、Um, so carrots, when you cut it, there are some big pieces, there are some smaller pieces, and it reminds people of like a little gold coin. 系系咪即刻觉得有意头咗？咁跟住最后咧就诶呢个白甜最后一白啦，咁就系个诶糖椰丝。椰丝系咪同椰角都一样咯？系啦，都系取其有椰有籽嘅意。Yep. So this is back to the coconut again, and this is the coconut shred, which is similar to the coconut meat in the beginning. And again, this is to,、um, I guess, reinforce the idea that Chinese family they always want people or generations and generations to be together. 意思即系三代同堂咯。咁你个白甜咧就齐晒啦喺呢度。哇，齐晒白甜啦，耶！咁跟住你个全盒中间咧，我就会建议你摆埋个瓜子。瓜子系啊，即系挖银子。系啦，找啊。啊 ，so this red one, I forgot the name in English. Oh, so it's a watermelon seed. So they roasted this. 
and then it becomes red. And then they said, when you pick it up, that means you are picking up a lot of money. So this, they will usually have eight different kinds of uh, sweet candies around the chin hub. And then you will have the watermelon seed, the roasted watermelon seed in the middle. And then they will continue to add on some things. Yep, so that's sort of pretty much it. And then this is the pistachio. Uh, pistachio in Cantonese, it's hoi sam guo. So hoi sam means happy. And then you also have a little bit of a gold chocolate. Yeah, so in the middle, then they say you can put a uh, little tangerine in the middle, and then you can also put an envelope with a regular coin in it and then coins in hong kong it has two dollar coins at ten dollar coins so then usually you put a little coin in it that means you have some gold and then you also have a silver coin so to make it complete so this is a chinese traditional candy complete box but you know um whenever i would go uh, to Bailin, and then they have the box there. I would honestly hope they had some of the candies or the chocolates because I like coconut, but I have never really, not never, but I haven't seen coconut as frequently as some of the others that they showed there. But when you go for the Bailin, you usually bring uh, something with you. And in Hong Kong, the, <laughs> yeah, the blue tin cookies are the best. They're actually called Kjeltsen's butter cookies, but everyone in Hong Kong just calls them blue can cookies or blue tin cookies. So it would be lam, which is like lam sek, your blue color. So lam gun kuke. Kuke is your is your cookie, and gun is like the tin. And there's some funny memes going around I saw before because if you've seen one of these in someone's house, just the tin, and it's not Chinese New Year, it's traditional to use it for all of your sewing things. So <laughs> it's like a sewing kit when it's not um, full of cookies for Chinese New Year. But these are typically, that's a scene, the picture is of a grocery store in Hong Kong. And, you know, after Christmas, it's almost impossible to get in the stores because the aisles are covered with cookies, Ferrero Rocher, which I actually found out in, do, in, in looking for this picture that Ferrero Ferraro. Rocher, you know, the chocolates with hazelnut, those and Kjeltsen's are the same company. So wow. maybe that's why. So those are two very popular, popular. And of course, I always hope that the Chun Hup is going to have some white rabbits. And I think this year, the white rabbit candy, are you guys familiar with the white rabbit candy? They're like milky uh, candy. And you can tell there's like a, it looks like wax paper, but it's actually rice paper and it's edible. So these are just so iconic in in China and in Hong Kong. I think they've been around since like 1940. I'm not sure. Yeah, white rabbit candy is the best. And um, so I always hope that the Chun Hup is going to have, have some of these in it um, as well. But this is called white rabbit candy. Yeah. And so moving on, because I think our time, we're going to be running overtime if we don't get going. But the so now that that's that's the first day of the new year, visiting senior members, visiting your husband's family, going to Wang Tai Sin Temple, uh, doing the Bai Lin, red packets start to be given out. Um, Lin Chao Yi, this one is the second day of the new year. And I have never done this before, but there is something called Lo, Lo Hei right? Lo hei, and it's called a prosperity toss. I've never seen it. I've never done it in all my years. I'm not really sure. I think it's a new thing, right, Janet? Yeah, it's a new thing. It's actually getting very popular. And I believe this is actually from Malaysia or Indonesia. So mm. the um, East Asia culture that is kind of going into Hong Kong as well. Um, of course, Lin Chao Yi, that is when a lot of businesses that they will treat their staff and then people will have a very similar meal um as the last day of chinese new year so in here you will see the pun choy again and a lot of times they will also add on this low hay as well and then i think the next video that is when i'm going to show you what actually low hay looks like and then how people eat it 
So let's see. I hope it's not giving me any more ads because it's going a little crazy right now. Let's see. Yeah, so the as they eat it, they will also say uh, good luck things as well. And then they would be kind of bringing the food a little bit up in the air. Um, a lot of times the lo hei, they said, is a vegetarian dish. But then this one, they also add a little bit of uh, sashimi in there as well. Yeah, so this is lo hei, which is a, you know, maybe like a modern day, nowadays Hong Kong uh, popular dish during Chinese New Year. All right, back to you, Sue. Yeah, okay. So then we're moving on to our Lin Cho San, which is also could be called a Tai Hao. And on that day, as we mentioned before, the third day of the new year, no family uh, by Nin, because that is the day when arguments might happen. And so nobody wants to go visiting and get into an argument and start the new year off on the wrong foot. But uh, at Che Kong Miu Temple, Miu is temple. Uh, a lot of people will visit that. There's special traffic arrangements and everything because it's so popular. It's in Sha Tin, uh, kind of between Dai Wai and Sha Tin in the New Territories. And a lot of people go there, of course, to beat the drum for good luck, to spin the pinwheels. So that's something else you might see in people's homes, actually, is um, uh, we, we always had like a pinwheel in the window to spin, to spin for good luck. And people go here to spin the pinwheel for good luck at the race course. Janet mentioned that they'll go racing and there's always big um, pinwheels there for people to spin. And that's a way to, um, to wish for good luck in the new year. So now we are going to introduce some uh, sayings that you're going to hear and you can say during Chinese New Year. So let's see. These on this page, we've got a few pages of these because there are so many different sayings that you could use. But on this one, these are all super, super popular. So, of course, the first one is just simply Happy New Year. Now, New Year, new is sun, that first tone, high tone, sun. Year is nin. So you're literally going from the very highest to the very lowest, sun nin. And then happiness or happy is Phi, the midtone phi long. So sun nin phi long is happy new year. So you're going to hear that a lot. Uh, we'll go through these first and then maybe we'll pick one or two for you guys to repeat. So sun nin phi long is uh, happy new year. The next one is just everybody knows this one, even in English, right? They'll spell it in English. In Cantonese, the pronunciation is gong, gong hei, fa choi. So you're going one, two, three, four, right? The gong hei fa choi, right? And dropping down at the end for choi. Uh, so that means congratulations and uh, prosper, right? Fa choi, fa, like bring out the good luck, right? Congratulations, bring out the good luck. Gong hei fa choi. And then the next one is you notice the Chinese characters because you're going to see these above a lot of doorways, uh, especially in businesses, in family homes. Remember that fai chun, the fai chun that we saw above a door, chut yap ping on. So you're going to hai chut, which means to go out, uh, yap, which means to come in, and then ping on means peace. Right? So peace, ping on is peace, chut yap ping on. And our next one is wishing you uh, health, good health, right? So we've got literally body, which is sun tai. Sun tai, and then health is gin hong. So sun tai gin hong, you hear it all the time for Chinese New Year because you can wish this to anyone, right? Everybody wants to have a healthy body. So it's just wishing you body health, literally. So sun tai gin hong. And the last one here is may you rise higher and higher with every step. So it's kind of backwards in the Cantonese. It's the bo bo go sing. Bo bo is steps. Right, so steps go is high, right? High and sing is rise up. So bobo go sing is may you rise higher and higher with every step you take. Mm -hmm. And to say you uh, 
typically preface these by saying, I wish you, right? Uh, which would be, I wish you, for example, but after you say that I wish you this, you just kind of continue on and saying, usually people will say three and four in a row, three or four sayings is right in a row. And um, so you'll hear that a lot. Mm -hmm. So how about if we try like, um, uh, maybe, because that's a really general one that you can say. So how about, would anyone like to try or we can do it together, right, Janet? Let's do it together. Yep. Okay. On your count of three, how's that? Okay, sounds good, everybody, right? So one, two, three. And that is, um, you can say that to anyone and it's super popular. So that's a good one to learn, to memorize so that you've got something to say when you see, uh, when you see your friends and family. Yeah, or even for your grandparents' birthday, you can also say as well. Mm-hmm. And here are some more sayings. These are also super popular. Uh, like I like I mentioned, people normally will string together three or four blessings uh, just in a row. So the first one here is 10,000 things or situations win in your favor. I always like these the English translations of these because they're they're quite they're quite they sound funny, right? You wouldn't go up to somebody and say ten thousand things and you know, <laughs> win in your favor, but in Chinese it's going to be your um, man si man si sing yi. Can you say that one, Janet, for me? Because that one I think I got man si sing yi. Yeah, the six six three three a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. Man si sing yi. Man si yep. sing yi. Yep, man si sing yi. Yeah. Yep. Thanks. And then one of the most popular one, this is some mm -hmm. sang si sing. Yep. So some whatever, si yeah, sing. whatever your heart desire, it will come true. Yes. Some, mm -hmm. remember you guys, uh, some, if you were with us with a dim sum, right? Some is your heart. Mm -hmm. Yep. So some sang si sing. And then yes. Sue, this one? Uh, yes, this one. Uh, Cha yun guang zhen which is streams of income increase and improve. So especially if you're talking to someone who has maybe their own business or uh, a side job or something, then this is a good one to say to them. Mm -hmm. Remember the two low, Choi yun, guang, zhen. And next one we have fa hoi fu guai. So it's if your flower, I think it's with your flower blooming, then you will also get riches as well. So it's fa hoi, it literally means the flower is blooming, and then you will be rich. Fa mm -hmm. hoi fu guai. And then we have this last one, Sue. Yes, the last one then is, uh, I think we mentioned this when we were talking about food last time, because it is nin nin. So if you recognize those two characters, it means year, year, lin, lin, yao, yu. Now this yu is, sounds like yu, which is fish. And I think last time we talked about this, how they yep. like to use words that sound similar. And that's why you eat fish. And then like maybe if we, with your tuning van, because it sounds like may you have excesses every year. Nin, nin, yao, yu. Mm -hmm. And then so should we try Yes, that's a good one to try. So one, two, three. Yay! Yes. So now we've pulled out a few that are good to wish for your elders. Um, some of these are, are the same that we saw before, but the first one was the energetic like a horse and dragon. And this usually you see at the race course a lot too, because they reference the ma, which is horse, and dragon, which is long. So you've got long ma zing san, right? And zing, zing san is like your 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 energy, right? Your zing san. If you are very zing san, you are like alive and energetic, right? So long ma zing san is energetic like a horse and dragon. 
Yep. And then the second one we have again is san tai gin hong, which already happened, I think, maybe in our previous slides. So this is yes. a very popular one to use. Mm -hmm. And the next one we also had as well. I think you guys probably know this one best by now. It is your chut yap. Chut ya peng on, chut ya peng on, safe and peaceful each time you enter and exit your house or a place of business or, yeah, chut ya peng on. And this last one is ting chun sang ju, ting chun sang ju. So this is also a good one if you have a sister or mom's birthday, you can also say this to her as well. All jok lei ting chun sang ju. How about in here, Sue, we try long ma jing san. Okay, that sounds good. All right, you guys ready? In one, two, three. Ngo. 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 Uh, on the sides of things and, and and different things. And it's so much fun. I don't know. Do they do that in Chinatown where you can, someone will actually sit on the street and you can go and they can write it for you? Do they yeah, do we that? even had a library program pre be before COVID. We actually had a library program where one of our uh, neighborhood senior that comes in oh. with his uh, Chinese calligraphy pen. And also I remember he had gold paint as well and all his red paper. And then he would write all these lucky phrases to us. And oh, to, wow. to the community too. Yeah, it's a big uh, popular program that we have had before. Yeah, it's so special when you can get it handwritten and not just, I mean, you know, at different places, I'll just print them and give them out, you know, for free uh, banks and things. But it's really special when you can get somebody to, to do it for you. Yep, and Oakland Chinatown is having our street fest this coming Friday and Saturday. And you will see a lot of those as well. So it was canceled last week because of the rain. So now that the rain has subsided, uh, the Chamber of Commerce is having its uh, street fest in Oakland Chinatown this coming Friday and Saturday. So if you have time, come and check us out and come and visit us at the library too. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so in here, Sue, this is for, I guess, little children, the wishes for them. Right. Yeah. And these are things that you'll hear grandmas and grandpas say to their, their children. And the first one would be uh, fast, tall, uh, grow up, big. <laughs> literally so you've got fai go zhang dai if i go zhang dai would be something that they you might hear saying grow up big and tall quickly and the next one yep next one we have chong ming chong ming means clever ling lei it's also sort of clever smart um so we have chong ming ling lei together then it's clever and smart Yes, and then the next one you hear all the time, and you'll see this on the Fai Chun, it's Ho Yip Jun Bo. Ho Yip Jun Bo. Academics improve. Ho Yip. And then Jun Bo. Jun Bo means to uh, progress or improve, right? Show progress. So that's really, really popular. If uh, you've got a student in your family, you're for sure going to hear this. Yeah, Ho Yip Jun Bo. And then the next one that we have is Siu Hao. Shanghai. So seal it means smile. How it means your mouth. And then Shanghai means it's always open. So meaning um, you know, you're always happy. Mm -hmm. Should we try one in here, Sue? Yeah, let's try that. Which mm -hmm. one should we try? Uh how you jumbo. Yeah, that one let's is try so that. Hard. You'll hear it a lot. So ready? One, two, three. What if my foot was this? Nice. And we just pulled out a few more that uh, maybe you might hear uh, if they meet together, right? So I wish you good health would be something that they could, uh, that grandchildren can say to their grandparents. And that would be our ngo. Ready? I think we can do it all together because we've seen it before. One, two, three. No. Okay. 
Yep. So okay. usually what happens is after you say this uh, greetings to your grandparents, and then your grandparent is going to hand you the red envelopes. And usually they will hand it in pairs or in a single. And then you will use your two hands to receive it. And after you receive it, you will put it away in your pocket. Make sure you don't open it right away. It's considered... I think rude to open it right away. And there's actually a special date that people can open the red envelope, but never open it right in front of your elders or who to whoever that gives you the red envelope. Right. And that goes through for business cards as well, or anything that you're handed and that it's usually two hands to take it with. And um, yeah. Yeah. So let's say after the grandchild saying, mm-hmm. and the grandparent, they may reply, should we try that one? One, two, three. Mm-hmm. Like grow up. Mm-hmm. And these are, we just thought we'd throw some in there. Uh, if you would like to wish somebody good wishes for work or their career. So the first one would be the gong jong son nei. Right? Gong jong is like your work and son nei is like going smoothly. So gong jong son nei, work goes smoothly. Um, Janet, do you want to take the second one? Yep. So the next one we have is si yip yao seng. So it's a successful career, si yip. It's a career. Yao Seng is successful. Si Yip Yao Seng. Yes, and I'll just point out that here's an example of where I didn't change the Yu Peng to Yale, the J A U. If you're like Zhao Na, it's actually the Yao Yao Yao. It's a J for the uh, Yu Peng Y. Yes. And the last one income or work, keep coming however long you work. Uh, <laughs> Cheng. So cheng means long, right? Cheng, if something is very cheng, like cheng taofat, right? Long hair. So cheng zhou, zhou is to do, and cheng yao is long time to have. Mm-hmm. So yes, a few more sentences that you might uh, say if you're actually older and working, no longer in school, and your grandparents is you might say to them, I wish you'll be energetic like a horse and dragon. Actually, the dragon comes first, but yeah. So that would be one. And Janet, what would uh, the grandparents say in return? Yes, and I'd probably be handing you red packets as I say that. Yep, so. and remember, don't open your red packet. And then I think there's someone that's actually asking in the chat, then mm-hmm. when can I open it? I think it's after day seven. After at least, at least after day seven of Chinese New Year. So usually, what happens is I remember, um, as a child when I was growing up in Hong Kong, then we will collect a pile of of them, and then we normally will give it to our parents. And then as New Year passes till day seven or day eight, then we are finally allowed to open them, and then we'll sort them. And as you see the colors of these bills in uh, Hong Kong money, then we'll sort them by colors to see how much we have. So it's quite fun. I always remember too, like when we, um, uh, when my kids were younger, the big thing was um, putting the money in the envelopes. That was always something, it took a long time because you'd come back with these stacks of new money from the bank. And because you tend to give out, uh, you know, if you frequent certain restaurants, you're going to be giving it to the wait staff. If you, so you might think like, oh, I don't need that many, but in Hong Kong, actually, you need a lot of lazy phone. Usually you wouldn't leave home without at least taking a few in your pocket with you for people that you might see. And um, yeah, yeah, so that's fun too. Anyway, I digress. We are now talking about Lunar New Year wishes for people who own businesses. And we touched on some of them, but here is the first one would be uh, Sang Yi, which is business, and then Heng Long, right? Sang Yi, Heng Long. Great for business and doing trades. Yep. And then the next one that we have in here is Choi Yun Guangzhen. 
So meaning it's uh, you are going to have uh, streams of income that keep on coming in and keep on coming more of it. So it's Choi Yun Guang Zheng. Yes. And then the last one is it really is like one sail and the wind is smooth. So everything goes smoothly for you, a ship that only needs one sail. So yet for our one, yet fun. And one sail, feng sun. Feng is your wind and sun is like sun. We had that before. Sun lei, like the very smooth. Yeah. Yet feng. Am I sorry? Yet fun, feng sun. Yet fun, feng sun. Did I say it wrong? I'm sorry. I'm like, it's good. <laughs> 我祝你一帆风顺. 一帆风顺. Mm. Mm -hmm. This is also a very good one. Mm -hmm. Whoopsie daisy. I don't do foreign words. All right. Yes. So this is our, our last slide. And um, of course, uh, except for day three, when you don't want to be doing visits and um, and playing mahjong, da uh, da maja is also very very popular during Chinese New Year, and uh, I love to play. I have videos on my channel about learning to play, so <laughs> I would love to come out to Oakland and play with y'all. Um, but hopefully, we're going to be getting a video together about playing mahjong in future. Yes, and this is actually how I met Sue online as well, because I was actually looking for videos to learn how to play Mahjong. I did not learn Mahjong as a child. So many of my friends, they know and I don't know. So I am trying to learn. And that is how I bump into Sue's video on how to play Mahjong. And she's a really good player. And hopefully we will be able to get her out to play Mahjong with us. And then she said, if that's not possible, then she can also make a video for us. And then she'll be teaching us how to play Mahjong as well. So this sort of brings us to the end of our Lunar New Year Let's Cancel Talk series. I hope you guys all have fun. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask you a little bit. Yeah, I'm just looking at the comments here. If you have any questions about anything, um, there's so much to Chinese New Year that even I learned a lot just doing this series with you, Janet, because there's some things I didn't even know, or I knew a lot of a lot of things I just knew I've seen them, but I didn't really know why. Um, so there's a, a lot you can learn about Chinese New Year and cultural traditions and things. Yes. And I think as we learn, then we realize how important it is to us to kind of keep up with doing some of the traditions. A lot of times we will do it, but we don't understand. Now that we understand a little bit more, then maybe we will be even more driven to do it. Again, if you are interested to learn more Cantonese, you can visit Sue's uh, Cantonese Corner. This is her YouTube channel. And cantolingo.com is her website where sometimes she will have classes there. You can kind of check it out. Uh, she also has her Instagram page, which is at Cantonese Corner. So make sure you go and take a look. In the library itself, we have this link in here that we have our Cantonese learning resources for you and also our Asian Branch Library Instagram page. And this program, again, I will have to thank the Rockbridge friends to sponsor us. And thank you to Sue again for your sessions. And we have had so much fun and I hope we will get to have Cantonese classes again in the future. Thank you so much for having me. This has been so much fun and I've learned a lot too and I hope you guys have too. So thank you so much for joining us. Yay, so thank you. So thank you. 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 Thank you.